toughest dogs need the toughest human. So we spent a day with James Giuliani, a former mafia enforcer turned animal rescuer. Albert, stop it already. Don't give a fuck. This is wild. This is rescue. <laughs> James Giuliani doesn't sleep. He's fueled by 15 espressos a day and two packs of cigarettes. He hasn't taken a day off in five years. Anything I do, I just do to the extreme. He spends every moment of his day taking care of animals who would otherwise be killed. Violent pit bulls, disabled cats, orphan squirrels, baby raccoons. Move, move, asshole. Come on, back it up. He used to spend his time as a mafia enforcer for the infamous Gambino crime family. Motels, prostitutes, robbing people, anything I can do. I got arrested on uh, attempted murder, hijacking, well, I'm sorry, conspiracy to commit murder, conspiracy to commit hijacking, conspiracy to commit kidnapping. Then, he and his wife, Lena, found a beaten and abused Shih Tzu dying in the street and brought him to a vet. Uh, the vet tech came out with the dog. Um, she just, he looks me in the mouth. And that, that basically was my, my turning point, big time. Because how can an animal that was abused by man lick me in the mouth? He should be fucking biting my face off. It was a human that hurt him. Now, his whole life is in service of animals too violent or too broken for the traditional rescue system. The animals that were destined to die. Every dog here um, basically was given up on was going to be euthanized. He believes in couches, not cages, so he runs Kino's Animal Sanctuary, the only fully cageless animal facility in Brooklyn. This is a second shot at life for James and his animals. It's a life you've never seen before, and it's one you'll never see again. This is a day in the life of the dog fodder. James just called me and said it's it's 1.30 and I'm already having an insane day. What time do you get back? 4.15 this morning. You know, when you got something that you love, all right, it's like a, a, a mother waking up to give her baby the bottle every three hours. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Does she ever miss? What? She loves it. It's a baby, you know? I just happen to have 79 of them. The first stop, obviously, espresso. One, two, three, four, espresso. Then it's off to the store. James and his wife Lena run the Diamond Collar, a grooming salon and pet store. The Diamond Collar funds his whole rescue operation. He doesn't really fundraise. The $6,000 or so he spends a month on his one-man animal sanctuary is entirely self-funded through here. Then it's off to the vet's office. James is here at least twice a day. Dr. Bernice educates me um, on everything that's medical. Because a lot of times I'll rescue with this. Why should you rescue with this? We head to the deli to get a great lunch, but not for us. It's for the dogs. We're going into Mr. Kim's. Just, I just get them ham, bologna, um, roast beef. You get them cold cuts every day? Every day. Do these dogs eat better than us? <laughs> now a stop at home where James and his wife Lena take care of another 27 animals. Um, the 21 cats and five dogs. Six dogs. So I get up every morning, I do all the litters, I feed all the cats down here, all the dogs upstairs, basically they live upstairs, we don't even bother coming down here, I just cook in here. We take the cats no one wants, blind, crippled, crazy, give them to us, because those are the cats that have no shot. Because that's true rescue, true mm -hmm. rescue, you understand? Alex, aren't you allergic to cats? I'm so allergic to cats, I'm so, and I'm surrounded, I can see five cats right now. <laughs> this is a disaster. People around town know James as the rescue guy. So James often finds orphan baby squirrels like oh these God. ones dropped off at his house. Right, there you go, look at that. <laughs> these things have sharp nails. They are babies, but their nails are fully grown. Okay, you see, you can throw them across the room and it's <laughs> <laughs> Okay, now it's finally time to go to Kino's Animal Sanctuary. Oh wait, no, first, espressos. James. Yo. Espresso God, Animals and Laners is what gets me through the day. Okay, gentlemen, we are entering Kino's. We're going to Kino's Animal Sanctuary. This is where James spends most of his time. Kino's is his ultimate gift to New York City's forgotten animals. We can expect chaos, mayhem, and happy animals. And remember, these dogs are cageless. James told us in advance, wear sweatpants under our jeans, in case anyone wants to bite. He also said, um, dogs smell fear, so Try not to smell fearful, okay? I am gonna open the door. Do not stand like chicken shits in my hallway. Walk in with me. Walk in tough. tough. Walk in with me. Dick? Alright, no, it's a search walk right now. Okay. Frank, 
Hello. 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 Oh, Albert. Albert. the biggest dog I've ever seen. <laughs> Albert. You certainly seem happy. Hey, back. Albert, go. Albert goes. Black tea bag. No. Two of the biggest dogs I've ever seen. Oh my god, that's a polar bear. <laughs> oh, crap. Oh, so many dogs. That's currently 15 dogs and 31 cats that are otherwise unadoptable. Ferals, shriek, dying, missing years. These are real misfits, though. These you can't touch ever. Oh, and squirrels, tortoises, baby raccoons, possums, geckos, you name it, that he rescues and releases upstate. <laughs> Can I pet this one or is he gonna bite my face off? So far I hit him with a squirrel, now I hit him with a gecko. What comes next? It doesn't feel like this is real life. It just feels like we're in some type of fantasy world, but this is James's life. The point of Kinos is to let these guys be the bosses for life. These dogs, under any other circumstance, would be dead. They were violent, abused, unloved, rejected until James took him in. James believes they were all simply set up for failure by humans. Like Charlie, he once ripped a baby's face off, but here at Kino's, he's super chill. Albert has bitten over 30 people. He was found wrapped up in some Christmas tree lights and left for dead. Primo's an old guy, product of divorce. Lil John, also a biter. 66, a wild man who was found running around the projects by the 66th precinct. And Hagrid is fully blind and not going anywhere. If I was the boss, they'd be in cages. If I was the boss, I wouldn't let them destroy things. If I was the boss, I couldn't piss and shit all over the place. You know what I'm saying? I, I'm, not, I'm not the boss. I, I built this for them. So they could be away from abuse. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to make up for all the fucking years that you were living in a scumbag fucking house, abused. I'm gonna make up for it. Maybe it'll take two years, three years, four years, but for the rest of your life, whatever it is, you're gonna be on a pedestal, no matter what. Just picked up about $20 worth of Chinese food. That's gonna be dinner for the dogs tonight. Wow, Ooh, the dogs are getting that? Yes, sir. Didn't we say they eat like kings? All right, James, you're putting us to work? No, we're at doctors. I've always wanted to do that. We're gonna get in the truck. We're gonna pass around some squirrels and feed them some formula. This is one of the more absurd settings I've ever found myself in. Due to wildlife laws, he can't have these squirrels in the shelter. Come on, you gotta be the mother. He's a baby. So we're out feeding them in the van. Push that bitch. Boom. <laughs> you look like you're gripping them too hard. Animal. This thing is just wrapped ah. around. <laughs> just a regular Thursday night here. The Nowhere Man and James. When you're when you're in James the dog father's van in Bensonhurst <laughs> and your two best friends are in the back seat feeding some baby squirrels. That, that, that feeling when? Yeah. That feeling when? It's right now. James, it's uh, eight o'clock at night. This is your first bite of the day. First time I ate all that. There's still so much work to do. So another nighttime espresso. You fucked me up. And a second round of Chinese food for the dogs. All right, it's midnight. And now we have to walk every single one of these dogs one more time before the night is over. We basically got the streets of Bensonhurst to ourselves, and uh, it's late. We, I know we've had like six espressos today, but it's still late. Everything comes back to Bruno, that doomed shih tzu he found dying on the street. I wanted to do so much for him, to prove to him that not all humans are scumbags. You understand? That's why they're all here. So they, sh they, they, they should be thanking me. They gotta thank him. It's such a long, crazy day that we'll only get to sit down with James for this interview at 1.30 a.m. We'll talk for an hour and then head out. James still has to go home, cook for all his dogs and cats there, and feed the baby squirrels again. He won't go to bed until at least 4 a.m. This is the second chance at life for James and all his animals. This is a room of creatures, humans and animals that had a tough start and a happy ending. There you go. I love that. Actually, that is, a, that is, that is, that is this is a place of creatures, all God's creatures, that life started off horrible, but it's gonna end beautiful. That's what this place is, yes, I like that. Fuck I'm, yeah. I'm actually using it. All right. All right, do we have any more questions, guys? Now get the fuck out of my place. No. <laughs> my name is James Giuliani, and this is Kino's Animal Sanctuary. <laughs>